I'm Dr Gemma Bowers, I'm a clinical psychologist at the Elsie Bertram Diabetes Centre and my role is to help people deal and cope with the emotional aspects of diabetes. The diagnosis stage can often come as a real shock, uh, particularly with type 2 diabetes it can be a very gradual progression and so the actual diagnosis itself could come as a shock or could be something that they know has been a possibility for some time. As a result of that, either the person reacts with a kind of grief response, so shock, denial, um, sadness, anger, frustration, or other feelings more related to guilt and depression if they feel that in part they may have been able to prevent the diagnosis? Oh, I was about, what, 40 at the time when I was diagnosed, so uh, really I had no idea of what diabetes was or where this path was going to take me and um, didn't know very much about it at all at the time. And so that was a bit of a, it was a, bit of a shock, but I sort of came to terms with it really and uh, I've sort of lived with it since then. I was 21, yeah. I think I explained to you I got very tired one Christmas and that was when people said, I think you really should find out if there's anything wrong with you. And of course I was quite surprised. Um, I knew something wasn't quite right. Uh, didn't know at that time that uh, it was actually hereditary in my family. Um, but then relief that at least I had an answer to the problems that I had. The, the, the thing was, I didn't have any diabetes in the family, so I, I hadn't been living with anyone or a parent or brother or sister or anything that had diabetes. Um, I didn't really know the I didn't really know what the symptoms of diabetes were until it was explained to me later. I, you know, I theoretically should have experienced tiredness, thirst, and blurry vision, various things like that, but. None of, those, none of those are actually present, so you can't actually sort of take it for granted that you're going to have the symptoms. Um, it was a difficult time because, as I say, we'd only just moved here, so I didn't have family and friends around to support me. And so consequently, I did struggle for quite a while. It just would have been lovely to have known maybe of another diabetic who lived in the area that I could have spoken to. There's a whole range of reasons why somebody might be struggling emotionally with the psychological side of diabetes. Diabetes is, is something that takes up a lot of time and a lot of effort in terms of medication management and day-to-day -day tasks, blood glucose testing and so on. And that can take quite a toll on the person enduring it. So often things like depression and anxiety are more common in this kind of group of people. Similarly to anxiety, which kind of stress is, a, is highly related with, lots of people with diabetes worry about the potential of future complications and sometimes that worry can take hold and become, you know, make the person withdraw from life and avoid situations that might trigger that anxiety again. Uh, I do have a stressful job, like a lot of other people, uh, but I do have to monitor that very carefully. And that does cause stress levels and I have noticed that has had an effect on my blood sugars. So in terms of working through that, usually we, we just discuss the kind of worries that the patient has, whether about complications or hypos or whatever else it might be related to diabetes. So food essentially gets a different, a different kind of name for itself. It's seen in a different light when you have a diagnosis of diabetes. I think it was just before pancake day, actually. And um, I can remember making some pancakes and thinking, this is the last pancake I'll ever eat. But of course it wasn't. You can, you can work all kinds of things into your diet. You don't need to sort of, you know, deprive yourself of all the fun in life. And essentially, it comes down to making behavioural changes in order to maintain the best possible blood glucose levels that you can in order to prevent as many complications as you can. 
something that they would have seen purely as an enjoyable thing to do, a sociable thing to do, and eating for the sake of eating, as opposed to eating in line with what is necessary to maintain your blood glucose levels. Perhaps an alternative coping strategy would be more successful, and that might be one of the reasons why it might be useful to meet with me, or as I say, someone else, if that difficulty was pre-existing, to meet with uh, somebody in the community mental health team to talk through their coping strategies for difficult thoughts and feelings. Those are the people who you can go to for support, you know, at any time really, and it's really worthwhile making the most of those healthcare professionals. I think, importantly, the patient has a voice in those settings, and it's really important that if the patient has questions, concerns, or just general queries about diabetes or anything related to it, that the GPs and the practice nurses are probably the first people to go to in that situation, just to see if there's any advice or support that they can offer. So as I said, those thoughts, feelings, are of difficult thoughts and feelings are common and normal post-diagnosis and your support network, your family, your friends, anyone who you feel you can speak openly with about those difficult thoughts and feelings are going to be, you know, really important at that point. I don't, I don't think my husband worried too much about it really. I don't know. I've never really asked him. I mean, he does can he does worry more about me now, making sure that I, you know, I my meals aren't late, etc. When we go out to people, he fusses about. That's most important, really, especially in in a working situation. For instance, if um, if somebody's come to work with diabetes and um, they, you know, so so we, we always try and encourage someone to buddy up with someone or, or at least someone at work. Be quite open and honest about what the condition is. The fact you you, you could have a you could have a bad turn. Someone could find you laying on the floor. They wouldn't know whether you'd had a heart attack, whether you were drunk, whether you're having a hypoglycemic event. You know, so. That and that goes on for the for the duration. Really, your your friends and family are the ones who are there with you, living diabetes on a day to day basis. They're the ones who'll see what you're going through on a day to day basis, and the ones who can offer the kind of support that you ask for from them. I was approached um, nearly 10 years ago now to find out if I'd like to become a, a diabetes patient supporter and that's actually where you chat to other diabetics who may have just been newly diagnosed and just to offer really a listening ear. It's We're not there to give medical advice, we're just there to sort of be a friendly person on the end of the phone. We have, a, we have a free phone line that people can ring up and just have a chat about anything they want, really. Um, that's, usually every, that's usually everyday stuff, but if we, do find, if we do find somebody who's got a little bit of a problem, we've got a referral system where we can get them referred back into the specialist nurses or back to the GP. It is, as we know, it's an ongoing condition that, that develops in certain ways. and So, therefore, people can ring up if they're, if they're for instance, worried about... Um, if they want to speak to someone who's had a diabetic pregnancy, if they're converting from tablets to insulin, they can speak to someone there. Um, we have all age ranges in the group, and it's quite nice to be able to, to pair someone up, and people usually find it quite helpful. You know, I've had times when I thought, I don't want this anymore. But um, with the support that I have now, the support network that I have, and the fact that I look after myself, those those moments don't come very often and so I thought well if I can do for other people what I would have liked to have had for myself then great I will so I'm now a patient supporter and part of an 0800 number so that people can phone me up and um, have a scream or a cry or a laugh or whatever they need at the time. If they'd like to ring the number which is 0800 032087 we have these little cards which are available in doctor surgeries and are also given to the newly diagnosed, um, they'll be put straight through to our network manager. And if she's not available, there is an answer phone there, which can, she, they can leave a message on 24 seven. 
and we will get back. For newly diagnosed patients, there are group education sessions that are run in the community by some of our facilitators. And those are really beneficial, obviously, to take on the new information that's required for dealing on a day-to-day -day basis with diabetes, but also to meet other people in a similar situation who can understand and empathise with what you're going through on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. Diabetes is, is something that takes up a lot of time and a lot of effort in terms of medication management and day-to-day -day tasks, blood glucose testing and so on. And that can take quite a toll on the person enduring it. So often things like depression and anxiety are more common in this kind of group of people. So my role is to listen to the people, listen to what the difficulties are that they're experiencing, as I say, whether depression, anxiety or some other kind of mental health difficulty that's related to diabetes. And from that to establish the patterns that might be keeping those emotions going and then working out ways in which I can help them to make changes which in turn will hopefully alleviate some of the emotional distress that they're experiencing. I think overall my advice would be that generally speaking you can do pretty much everything with a diabetes diagnosis and it doesn't have to change what's important to you, you can still go on living the type of life that you want to live. You may need to make some adjustments to perhaps the way you eat and, and bringing in your various medication needs into your lifestyle, but those overall don't take up a huge amount of your day. And as I say, they don't have to take over your life. It's a really normal reaction to feel feelings of denial, anger, and anxiety in response to a, a new diagnosis of diabetes. That, I suppose, is the first step, is to acknowledge that those feelings are normal and they're likely to pass with time as you get more used to the diabetes medication and the diabetes behavioural changes that you might need to make in those first few months. If after those first few months, those thoughts, feelings around anger, frustration, frustration, anxiety and depression are still around, then that might be a time to talk to a professional about it. Generally speaking, we find that encouraging people to increase activity and regain a sense of, of a fulfilling life is the best way to help people live, as I said, a, a normal, happy, healthy life with diabetes.